the first off, we we just couldn't connect. We couldn't find each other, and uh, we gave them a chance, like we did in the first leg. You know, great save by Kalen right there in the beginning to keep us in the game. And at halftime, we said just be a little bit more patient. You know, move the ball around quicker. You know, those one-touch passes rather hold on to the ball and move the ball around because the spaces are going to, going to open up. And eventually the spaces did, but we could have had a lead at halftime as well, you know, with the chances we created. We said, keep going, keep going, it's going to come. Um, and eventually it came, you know, and uh, then we were able to con able to control the tempo and everything else. But once again, you know, we lose concentration and we make a mistake. And we speak about minimizing those mistakes because it could have been costly, you know, if, if the player had taken the opportunities and then... When it was 2-0, we, we knew that the game was over, but, uh, you know, just happy that we qualified, um, you know. Uh, the travel wasn't so fantastic, but uh, resilience by the players and, and great fight by the players. It's been a long season, you know, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, five-hour bus travel, you know, it's been a long season, but they stuck it out and they showed true, true grit and that's what champions do, you know, when it matters most. That is when they come through uh, for, for, for the team. So congratulations to everybody um, that, that was part of, part of the match today. Also want to say um, <laughs> congratulations to Janine, you know, uh, a long career. Um, I think this is well deserved, you know, she's even though all, always wore heart on the sleeve um, and it couldn't have happened to a more deserving person. Uh, good luck and welcome to the space. It's not easy, but we wish you all the best. Um, hopefully your uh, coaching career can be just as successful as your playing career. Thank you. Before we jump to the question, uh, Janine, a big game for you today. 185 caps, uh, making history today. What does that mean to you? And the overall uh, team uh, performance from your team today in saying goodbye? Well, today wouldn't have been uh, as a joyful one without a win and um, qualifying for another AFCON. Um, for me, you know, it wasn't uh, about me today. Yes, we celebrate the 185 caps, but we had a very important match to play. We knew coming in here it was going to be an easy one, um, especially drawing uh, away from home and coming here, but we always know that coming back home, playing on our home ground, um, we would have that advantage as we always do um, with an amazing crowd that comes out. So congratulations to the team and we wish them well for um, the next AFCON to defend another title for us. Um, but Overall, this is, has just been the cherry on top of the cake of a lengthy career for me, um, a great performance for me um, reaching this milestone. Um, and yeah, what better way to do it with, with the national team at home. And um, yeah, it's been a long journey with, with Banyana Banyana. Um, there's been many ups and down moments, um, but these are the kind of moments that one strives for and to achieve every single dream that you have planned out for yourself um, from a young age and just reaching this last one is, uh, like I say, a great performance for me. So thanks for all the support. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been amazing to see the woman's transformation over the years unfold. Um, a lot has happened, a lot of investments made into women's football, um, and I think people could see that women's football is probably the fastest growing sport um, globally right now, and a lot of investments have been made worldwide. And um, although I do think that South Africa are still some steps behind, compared to the rest of the world um, that is investing a lot in their women's game. Um, I do believe from where we, when I first started to where we are now, you know, a lot is, you know, being done for, for women's football. We, we get to play on nice facilities. We get to wear nice, you know, training kits. Um, we have all these people around us, fitness trainers, assistant coach, goalkeepers, coaches. That's all what we, we never had before. So a lot is invested in the, in the women's game. It's just amazing to see. Um, how how far it's come, um, you know, competitions coming up, CAF coming in, and the Women's Champions League currently happening, and just many competitions to help grow, um, not only football teams, but also individual players, you know, getting contracted abroad and playing professionally without thinking of 
I have a job to go to, um, and it's still currently happening here in South Africa, and that is something that we need to we need to change and something that we need to fight for. Um, and just you know, having so many players playing abroad is, you know, we need to try as a country to have, stop these players from going going abroad and have internationals actually come into play in, in South Africa. But that won't happen if there's no professional, you know, status over here and actually people making a, a full time career out of the sports. But these are the things that obviously need to develop and change, and we hopefully would see it in the next, you know, near future. I would say. I mean, there's the, the a significant number of British players in the highest level. Like, I was going to talk to you doing the right things in terms of how the players can and stuff like that. And as we step aside now, um, what would be the message you'd like to send to young boys and girls? We often have this problem with the national problem. What would you say to that young person? You know, every achievement or every dream that you set yourself up is is a stepping stone to the next. And you need to, no matter what you achieve or how successful you are, you need to remain grounded. And grounded means staying humble, staying disciplined in your roles, not knowing that you're earning a great amount of money and you're on top of the world. You know, you have to work for, for anything that you want. Um, and I always say to the youngsters that nothing worth having comes easy. And being successful is definitely a, a tough job, probably the toughest um, out there. You, you get challenged um, mentally, you get challenged every day physically, you have to put in the hard work there. So sometimes you don't want to wake up out of bed because of yesterday's training session, but you have to continue to grind the next day. And even when you are alone and when no one is watching, that is when it actually happens the most, where you have to take care of yourself and be self-disciplined in, in what you want to achieve. Um, but you know, success won't happen without failures as well. A lot of people think that success is just about winning and achieving great things. But, you know, you have to go through some lows in your life in order to, to reach the highest of stages um, for yourself individually, but also as a, as a team collectively. So that is what kept me going. And most of all, what has kept me alive is my passion and love for the, for the beauty of this game. Um, and I still, you know, say that if people... I had to say, you don't get paid to play sports. How many people would raise their hand up and say, me? And that would be me because for me, it's not about the money. It's about the love of the game and the passion that I have for it. And since I started at a young age, not from a young age that I think, oh, I'm going to make a full-time career out of this because never in my wildest dreams that I, that I think I would be, you know, the, one of the African highest capped African player on the continent. Um, but for me, it was just each and every um, achievement for me from a young age was just a stepping stone to the next. Can I speak the last question? Okay. I would just say, um, as I said, like you work until you can't anymore. Um, that has been how I looked at, at my career, um, never giving up on anything, no matter what challenges that you face. Um, and yeah, I would say just being that role model to the youngsters out there. Um, a lot of players look up to, to the ones that play and represent the national team. And if you don't lead by example, you know, it's, it's important that you look at yourself in the mirror and be like, will the next generation follow in my footsteps? And people are looking at me, what kind of attitude and behavior and um, just overall presence do I put out there as, as an athlete? And um, that is how I want people to see me as a, a leader um, and a very passionate, passionate into individual that love to play the game and represent my country with my pride. The man that you took the offer from, you know, all your opinions and some says he's probably the best. I don't know that he's going to continue it. Would you maybe have to meet him and 
Of course. <laughs> I would love to meet him and watch some of his games because I've never watched him before. I never had that opportunity to watch, but um, definitely would love to meet him and hear what he has to say that now a female has taken over. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, a box tick knife back at Rathbone. Um, would you say that this team that you have here on the pitch now, before and ready to go to defend the title, and what is the thought process behind the eight minutes of football today? <laughs> what eight minutes of football? Actually, we were gonna, <laughs> no, it was actually going to be five minutes for the jersey number five. And then Knox got injured. <laughs> At that moment where we sort of wanted to make the substitute, which was around about five minutes, you know. So that that was that was the whole idea. Um, look, uh, we've got a lot of players missing, um, you know, but uh, we've got a core group. Uh, you look at players that weren't even in the match day squad, the Shamati Twins, uh, Asanda, Salana, players are all either in the early 20s or just 19, 18. You look at the players on the pitch, Kile, Bona, Karabo, and Otolo. Um, even Faith coming on, all very young players. So it's not just uh, just about now. We're always making sure that we make the core group bigger. And the experience that they've gained over the last couple of games, I mean, we have one one centre-back that played at the World Cup, the others all injured. Um, Rafi Wejan is currently um, back playing. Mambulas just started playing again. Paley is injured. So we have a lot of players that are out. But um, the experience that they gained is second to none. Um, and we practically really, you know, dug deep where we had to put a team together. Um, Karabo doesn't normally play where she, where she plays at centre-back, but it just shows a lot more versatility, a lot more multifunctional amongst the players itself. Uh, Ramalepi played three positions today in the game. Um, you know, right wing, right back, left back. Uh, it shows the quality that we have within the group. Um, and that argues well going forward, because uh, come 2026, and I'm here with I'm not here, um, you know, there's a core group already developing. We already made a list of players that we're looking at to get ready for 2027. And a lot of these players, they've got to play at the WAFCON in 2024 to experience um, the WAFCON to be ready for 2026 to qualify for the World Cup now that we're no longer bidding for the World Cup. So it all goes well for the future. Okay, and we want something a bit different. Don't you think that sometimes some teams can have a, a cap side where they, you know, that was that was, yeah, that was that was extremely difficult. I think maybe you don't look for excuses, but maybe that's the reason for the lethargicness in the first half. A um, little bit of energy, not just that. They've had a long season. They played back-to-back -back games, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, and eventually that catches up with you. And when it's the heat like this, it also catches catches up with with, with you as well. And I think it was about the same for both teams, you know. It was very difficult, difficult out there, but um, they sh they grinded and they showed through grit, um, you know, and that's why I think we came through better than them. But you're right, Sanity has to prevail, you know. We have to make sure, um, you know, that you take care of the players' well-being. I think that is first and foremost, um, more than anything else, because you always read about players collapsing on the field, and we wanted to make sure and we insisted on a water break and any moment that there was a break from get through it, because we know that's a possibility. I mean. Be busy looking after other people's children, you know, not our children. So we have to take care of them while they're in our care. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks to 